Hey everybody, welcome to episode number 94 of the Deaf-Free Dad podcast. Today, guys, I am excited to welcome Jeannie Bodner to the show. Jeannie is a Roots member, and today she is here to share how she paid off over $35,000, get this, guys, in the last two years on just a single income. I'm so excited to have her on to share her journey over the last couple years, and I know that you guys are going to absolutely love this. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Debt-Free Dad Podcast, where we're helping normal, everyday people learn how to save money and kick debt so they can live a happier and stress-free life. Now here's your host, Debt-Free Dad, Brad Nelson. Hey, how is everyone doing today? You can find me on Facebook, Pinterest, YouTube, and Instagram. Just search Brad Nelson, Deaf Free Dad, and, and we would love to connect with you on one of those social platforms. And as always, it's great to have you guys with us here on today's show. And we've got a great one for you because we've got a real life story we're going to be sharing with you on people that are literally doing a lot of the same things that we talk about here on this podcast week in and week out. And Jeannie is here. Jeannie is single with four dogs. She recently moved to Florida from Ohio two months ago because she was tired of winter and wanted a change of scenery. And man, I can relate to that. Coming from Wisconsin, we are getting ready for winter. I wish I was in Florida. (laughs) Jeannie works as a project manager for a software company full-time, and then part-time, she consults with other software companies for their quality certifications. Now, in her free time, she runs a small direct sales business. She's been doing that now for 11 years, which is fantastic, and she is also a wedding officiant. Since her move to Florida, she has also taken up pickleball, which is really fun, by the way. My dad lives in Florida. I play a little pickleball when I'm down there with him. And she is spending as much time by the pool as she possibly can. Jeannie, so glad to have you a part of the podcast. Thanks for taking time to hang out with us here today. Thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, absolutely. So let's kind of dig into this a little bit. And and what I would like to know is, is even before you got on this journey of paying off debt and, and really taking control of your finances... What was life like, you know, as you were growing up and and even as you became an early adult on how you started to manage your money, uh, did that play a role in in some of the things that you did as an early adult as far as managing your money and and maybe some of the mistakes or even some of the celebrations that you had with your finances? Could you share a little bit about how you were raised learning about this stuff? So unfortunately, it was more of a mismanagement of money rather than a management of money. I grew up, um, my dad was an auto worker and my mom was uh, a school bus driver. So just, you know, middle class. But unfortunately, my dad, he not unfortunately, but my dad grew up extremely poor. So as he had a, a good job, he felt that he could experience some of the finer things in life. So they lived pretty much my whole entire life above their means. Of course, we didn't have the money discussions growing up. So they really didn't, you know, have those discussions with me. Maybe they felt they were too adult or I was just a child and that shouldn't be a focus of mine. I'm not really sure. Again, nothing against them. You know, they did a fantastic job. It's just money was never a discussion I had as a child. And therefore, I seen them overspending the credit cards coming out all the time. You know, if the when the VCR came out, you know, we had to have the latest and greatest. When the microwave came out, had to have the latest and greatest. And since my dad was an auto worker, you know, a new car every few years. And that's just how I was raised and didn't think there was anything wrong with it because all of the credit card commercials, everyone else was in debt. Everyone else seemed to be competing with their neighbors. And unfortunately that, that was how I lived my life at even, you know, once I got out of the house and I, unfortunately I married a man that was exactly like my father who every time his sister would go get a car or a neighbor would go get a car. We needed a car and a motorcycle. Oh, and maybe an ATV. And we couldn't afford any of that, but it didn't matter because we had endless credit. So why not? Right, right. And I think you bring up a good point because- you know, you know, you mentioned that, you know, it, it's probably no fault to your parents that they didn't teach you. It's just that they probably didn't know any better because it's how they kind of thought about money, how they came to learn about money. And they, they probably didn't think anything differently, like maybe we could do this a different way. 
to. Exactly. You know, and I think I think a lot of people fall into that. I know I know I fall into that. You know, my, my parents were really big on teaching me about making payments on time, credit scores, things like that. And of course, just like kind of what you did, that's what I prioritized in my early adulthood. I, I didn't prioritize the stuff that we talk about on this show. And and that left me living paycheck to paycheck and broke all the time. And, and I don't think right. they did that to me on purpose. It's just, it's one of those things that we just almost, um, you know, w- without thinking about it, we pass on down to our kids because it's just all we know. Right. And again, um, they taught me about credit scores and making your payments on time and, but never about, Hey, if you can't afford it, don't go buy it. Sure. Yeah. So, okay. So you, you become an early adult. You're, you're starting to take, you, you've taken on some of these habits and some of this financial mindset from your parents and talk about how that went. Like in your early, you mentioned you, you, you were married and, and that wasn't going well. There was some overspending going on there. Can you, can you talk about kind of as you went through your twenties and, and as you kind of started experiencing adulthood, like how did those all, how did all those old habits and things that you learned that mindset kind of play a role moving forward? Well, moving forward, I mean, marriage, when you're, when you're constantly in that much stress over money, your marriage does not go well. I yeah. mean, it just doesn't. So it took a toll on our marriage. Um, it also, I was working multiple jobs, even though I had a good job, I still was working multiple jobs because there was always something else we had to go out and get because we needed to compete with I don't know who, but we had to go compete with everyone. So I was working multiple jobs, stressed out. Marriage was stressed out. So finally, in my mid-30s, it was time to walk away from the marriage. And unfortunately, I didn't really learn any lessons from that. I decided I was going to prove something to probably my ex at the end of the day that I could do all of this on my own. And I built a house that was well above what I should have been building for. Mm -hmm. And then before I knew it, I I moved in the house in October. And in January, I lost my job. Wow. And on one income, when you lose your job and have no other sources of income, things start crashing and burning pretty darn quickly. Yeah. Things get scary very, very fast. Right. This is where I always kind of come up with, you know, they always say, you know, there's good debt and there's bad debt. Well, it's all bad when you can't pay it, no matter if it's good or not, right? <laughs> and I've been there. I've lost a home too for 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 a because of a divorce, and I know what that feels like. It's a very scary time, and it's it's not easy to go through. Now, ultimately, you decided to join Roots a, a, a several years ago, and and can you share a little bit about what were you what were you experiencing right before you decided to join, and and what kind of made you think, you know, maybe this is something I need to do to, to help me improve this stuff. Like, can you, can you share a little bit about that? Well, I finally, after a few years after losing my house, I decided to unbury my head from the sand because honestly, I was not, I was not calling the debt collectors back. I was not making payments arrangements. I wasn't doing any of the things that I should have been doing. I was ignoring it all and hoping that maybe it would just go away. And that's not how it works. Um, and you're best off just to, to, to suck it up and deal with all of them. That's right. (laughs) It's hard. (laughs) It's hard, but you have to do it. So I decided to, um, start reading some books, um, following a few different things. And then, um, I was, you know, trying to figure all of this out, working my direct sales um, and and cutting back where I wanted to and, and keeping what I wanted to, prioritizing what was important to me. Yeah. And then um, I was at a training seminar and I'm pretty sure you had just started with with our, our company. Yeah. And and I remember walking into your your class and. It was like everything that I knew you were saying, but it was like, oh, yes, he's on the same page. This is where I need to be. All, you're not alone. I seen all the other women in the room who were in the same place I was. And though you don't like to see anyone in the same place as you, sometimes you feel alone and it felt good that all of these other people had been where I've been or are where I'm at. And, and this isn't a journey you have to do alone. Yeah, absolutely. I love that you brought that up there towards the end that you're not alone because money is such a taboo topic. You know, it, 
you know, we're so quick to share those purchases, even when you're going into debt, that new car, that, that, that vacation you put on a credit card or those, you know, house improvements. But, but a lot of those things are done with debt and we're quick to, we're quick to talk about that. We're quick to celebrate those things. But what we're not sharing is a lot of the financial stress that most people are feeling. And, and when we got 78% of people living paycheck to paycheck, the majority of people out there are feeling very similar to how you were feeling back when you first started. I'm glad you brought that up because I know there's people listening to this show right now that are probably exactly where you were when you were walking into that class. You feel alone, you're scared, you feel like you've been the absolute worst at this. And the truth is, is that so many of us have so much in common with the same types of money mistakes that we've all made. We 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 have so much in common and, and you don't have to feel alone. I love that you brought that up. Thank you. Um, so looking back when you first started Roots, now, you know, we, when we go through the core content, we release the modules, like, what were some of the things, because because you had mentioned, you know, I, I knew a lot of the stuff that you were saying, Brad. Um, what, what were some of the things, though, that really got you to kind of start taking action that started to get you kind of back on the road to less financial stress and, and really taking control of your finances? Can you talk about a few of the things and share with the audience here that's listening here today that, of the things that really helped you the most as it, as it came to, like, paying off $35,000 in just a couple of years? So what helped me the most is... Growing up, my mom tried to put put us on a budget, but I think that she, she made it seem more like that it was a restrictive punishment rather than uh, just having a plan for your money. And that was the biggest aha moment for me, that a budget is not a punishment. It is not about being cheap. It is all about having a plan for your money. And if you want to go spend $300 a month on clothes, you can budget that in. And maybe you don't, you don't care if you have cable and you don't care if you go for coffee and you can determine for yourself what your own priorities are. Um, because everyone is different. I don't have children, so my priorities are different. I, I I can go without cable, but you know what? I like having a Manny and Petty. So it was a it was a give and take kind of thing. Yeah. You know, I cut it out a lot of unneeded expenses, but when you start really going through and you're like, hmm, what do I really need and what do I want and what's nice and what's not? And if all of your bills are getting paid then, you know, budget in for what you can have and what you want. Yeah, I love that. And I think you're totally right. I think, you know, most of us could probably have everything that we that we really want, not things that we just want just to want and have, but things that truly bring enjoyment to our lives. Most people would never go without those things if they really kind of just did what you said, is to go through your expenses and determine what are the things that really bring me joy and things that I want? Like you, I cut out cable and satellite TV in my life too. And and I realized that it's like I'm, I'm mindlessly watching a bunch of junk that I just, I don't really, really care about. It's just become a habit now. And I, I started seeing the bill and this was long before subscriptions came in. And, and, you know, you could get like Netflix for 15 bucks a month. You know, I was paying like 150 to $175 a month for, for satellite TV. It's ridiculous. Yeah. And, and so I finally said, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to do that anymore. And instead I use that money to build up my emergency fund faster and pay down debt. And, and I have not gotten or subscribed to cable and, and satellite TV since I cut it out almost a decade ago now. And, and it was just going through just like what you did is, is going through line by line. Like, do we need this expense? Yes or no. What kind of joy does this bring to my life? And really making a determination, not what other people think, but what do you really want? And I think if you go through that, just like you did, I mean, man, I think a lot of people would be able to do a little bit more of the things that they love to do and cut out some of the stuff that's just mindless spending, honestly. Right. So can you share a little bit about your numbers? So now I mentioned, I kind of let the cat out of the bag a little bit and said you had already paid off about $35,000. So can you kind of do a rundown of your numbers, what you've been able to save and pay off and, and what that timeline has been like for you? So I joined Roots in October um, two years ago, so almost exactly two years ago. Um, and I still had a lot of, we'll call it defaulted debt from when I lost everything. I was still trying to pay back, you know, the different miscellaneous credit cards that had gone to the, the, the collectors. And I was working towards getting all of that paid off. 
And uh, finally, probably six months into the program, not only did I have my $1,000 ER fund, but then I also was able to get those taken care of. And then as I went along, I did the snowball method and I started paying. I had three credit cards and I got each one of those paid off. And then I... um, I've had two vehicles. It made sense when I had the two vehicles, but when the pandemic hit, I wasn't going anywhere. I'm like, why do I need two vehicles? So I got rid of two vehicles, got one. So there was more debt. And as I've gotten pretty much debt free, all I have left now is my student loan. Um, Because I did go get my master's. So I'm super happy I did that. But it was an expensive endeavor. Sure. Um, Sure. So that's all I have left. And now I'm able to make almost double payments on that. And I've been putting almost, you know, almost my whole entire paycheck away now. Wow. In in the bank and, and prepping for retirement because I am getting close to 50 and I don't, I'll probably work a long time, but I want to have the option not to have to work a long time. That is incredible. So let me ask you this, the the real important question. How does that feel? It feels amazing. I feel like I'm able to make better decisions for myself and my well-being. Um, A lot of times we, we, I made decisions and we make decisions because we have that looming debt over our heads. We don't make the best decisions for ourselves because we're afraid of, well, if this doesn't work out, then I'm, I'm, everything's going to fall apart again. And I can't do this because of that. So because I don't have that stress anymore, I was able to change a job that I probably, you know, I wasn't unhappy in my job. It just wasn't the right fit. Sure. And because I didn't have that debt hanging over me, I was able to just jump and change jobs without a second thought about it. Like, hey, I can do this. And if it falls apart, I go a few months living on my sinking fund that I have for to pay the bills. And, and yeah. I'm good to go. No big deal. And, and I woke up one morning and said, hmm, I don't think I want to be in Ohio anymore. Yeah. And I sold my house in under 24 hours without it going in the market. So I was like, oh. I probably should find somewhere to move, huh? <laughs> yeah. What a great accomplishment. Seriously, if you think about it, not only have you shedded a bunch of debt, but you've gained confidence and you've also gained the opportunity to be able to make new choices because you've done this hard work. That is that is incredible. Like that's what most people tend to miss in, in all of this is that it's it's easy to sign up for a brand new car. It's easy to sign up for debt and use credit cards and all that stuff. But every time you do that, you are reducing the chances for future opportunity because you are limiting your choices because you are committing to the next X amount of time to pay that debt back. Like, for instance, you didn't you wanted to change jobs. Well, some people may not be able to do that because they've gotten themselves so much into payments now, they can't risk losing that salary or the security that comes with that job and, and taking a chance. Yet, if they did the work and got out of debt very much like you did, you earn those opportunities and those, and those choices back. <laughs> Congratulations to you. That is such that is such an awesome thing. Would you ever have imagined in a couple of years since joining that you would have been able to do some of the things that you've been able to do now in the last couple of years? No, not at all. And it just it's such a freeing experience. And it it puts you in a much better mindset and the the behavioral changes that you make and the decisions you make, they're completely different than when you have that huge pile of debt hanging over your head. Yeah, absolutely. And would you say too, because this is the other thing that, you know, we, we really try to drive home here is that this is a journey. This, this isn't like, you know, fix your life in 30 or 60 or 90 days. This is going to take some time. And, you know, today you feel much better, but would you say that you know, the process that we share, this debt freedom success path, the little wins, getting that first emergency fund built, paying off those first three credit cards that you were talking about. Would you say that every time you made that little step forward, that confidence build and and that security kept building, would you say that this has been a journey to get here? Because this doesn't happen all overnight, does it? Exactly. It has been a journey. My journey's still not over because, you know, once you get the student loan paid off, I want to be able to retire comfortably yeah. or think about it. So then all of that money 
needs to go to retirement. And so there's always, you know, planning and a journey ahead. And, um, but it's nice to be able to stop every so often and enjoy the, 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 you know, your journey and not just be constantly paying debt and struggling and stressing over all the stuff of the day. And you can actually sit, sit back and enjoy some of it. Yeah. That's amazing. Amazing. Now you also got into, um, minimalism, right? And I, can I you did. share, yeah. Can you share a little bit? Cause I, I love, I am not a hardcore minimalist, but I do practice a lot of the teachings and things that they talk about. Cause I, I love the whole idea of just you know, less is more, you know, and, and getting away from this relationship with stuff and things and, and really focusing on what really brings happiness and joy into your life. And so I'm not a hardcore minimalist, but I understand kind of the philosophy. Can you share how that impacted your life? Because you, you kind of got started with this at the same time as you joined Roots and how, how have those two played together in, in your journey and in, in really changing and improving your financial mindset? So what happened too is, you know, as I was prioritizing my budget, I realized that all this stuff and all of this, this money I was wasting on stuff, it wasn't making me happy. It wasn't doing anything for me. It was just causing more stress in the house because you can't find places for all of this stuff. Yeah. And if you can't display it and it's in boxes and it has no meaning or value, why, why are you having this? So I was able to focus on wanting to spend my money in other places as I was reviewing my budget and realized experiences for me was much more important than the stuff. And then, as I told you, I moved two months ago, thought I got rid of a lot of stuff until I packed everything up. Well, I actually <laughs> sold almost everything and I realized, wow, I have even more stuff than I even thought of. And as I was taking it to the thrift stores and selling it at garage sales for a dollar and 50 cents on things I spent a lot of money on, I realized what value did that have for me? Yeah. What did that bring me? So as I move forward down here, I'm making sure that my spending is more mindful in the purchases I make they make sense. Yes. I'll probably splurge here and here, there and buy a few things for the new house. I, you know, but they'll bring me joy and they will be a more mindful spend. Yeah. I love that. I love that. You're absolutely right. And, and finding things that really truly bring you joy. And in fact, we we're talking about minimalists. If you, if you have Netflix, you can just search minimalists on Netflix. They've got a couple documentaries if you're interested. And one of the statistics in the most recent documentary they came out with back in, uh, it was like winter of, um, 2021 this year, uh, they said the average ho home right now, the average home has over 300,000 items in it right now. And that, that is just astounding. And also, if you look at the statistics of storage spaces, there are now more storage spaces in the United States than there are of McDonald's and Starbucks combined. That is unbelievable. That just shows you how much stuff we have and we start to collect. Um, but yeah, definitely check out anything with minimalism. And I'm, I'm glad that's had an impact on your life. Uh, it's definitely had an impact on, on my life. There's no question. Can you share a little bit about some of your relationships? You know, as you're going through this process and, and handling your money differently, standing up and uh, standing up for your finances, standing up for your financial goals, standing up for your future, you know, sometimes that involves having some tough con conversations with people around you or, or having to say no to people because, you know, it's not in your budget and it's not the priorities that you have any longer. Can you share anything about your friends and family? Did they react to you in any way on how you were starting to do some of this and how some of the changes that you were making? Well, some of my family thought it was odd that I would pay money to help get out of, uh, you know, debt. And, <laughs> and I, I explained it wasn't a, it wasn't that it was the support system that I needed. That's just something I needed for myself. And yeah. And mom, please don't take any, you know, I'm not blaming you and, but I need, I need help kind of thing. And, and that's where I felt it was necessary. It was the support system here. And then also when I started having the conversations with my friends, a lot of them, you, you could tell who your real friends were yeah. because a yeah. lot of them, I didn't get any, any, um, any flack from them. I, I got a, a re-encouragement from them and them wanting to know more about it and them. Okay, well, let's go do this instead. You know, we do uh, 
date night at the gym, you know, kind of thing where we, me and the girls would go take a class together that at the gym we all belong to and, or we go for a hike or, you know, so we found things that we could still do together without spending money. And, and for the most part, they, most of them were on board. Those who weren't kind of walked away from because that's not, you know, what I wanted in my life. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I had the same experience. And, and I'm, I'm super glad, though, to hear that most of them were, were supportive. And that's great. And I think over the years, you know, this whole idea of, of less debt, more freedom, less financial stress, the more statistics come out about it, I think people are starting to kind of welcome this information into their life. Like, even if you don't want to become completely debt free, and you just want to start, hey, let's just take some control of what we've got and get some of this stuff paid off. I think there's a lot of people who are like, I'm tired of worrying about this stuff. You know, I'm, I'm tired of stressing. And, and I also love that you brought up the fact of the whole support part, the whole accountability part of this, because that is probably, uh, in my opinion, and why this business and why the Debt Free Dad podcast is here, why Roots exists is because of support and accountability. Most people know that we probably should budget, have a plan. Most people know that we should probably save more. Most people know we probably shouldn't go further into debt. But why aren't most people doing this stuff? And that's because they lack support and accountability. We are terrible accountability partners to ourselves. We are terrible at it. You know, and, right. and Jenny, or Jenny, you, you, you really did bring up a good point in the fact that you have to find a support and accountability system out there if you want to really make headway on your finances. That is going to make the biggest difference for you I say more so than anything, more so than even writing out your budget and doing the debt snowball. It's like having that consistent support and accountability system to lean on when times get tough because they do get tough because no journey is perfect. So Jeannie, real quick, can you share maybe just a few pieces of advice? You know, let's say, you know, there's someone out there listening, maybe very similar in your situation before you started Roots. You know, they're beating themselves up a little bit. They're feeling bad about their situation. What kind of advice would you give to them, knowing what you know now and, and having done what you've done over the last couple of years and the amazing results that you've gotten? What kind of advice or, or, or kind of encouragement would you give to that person today? That you're not alone, that that we've all made mistakes. I swear, I, I think I made every mistake possible up until my, my early 40s, but you can bounce back. You're not alone. And as long as you're willing to accept, you know, what you've done, uh, own up to your mistakes and move forward, it can be done and it's worth the journey. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I just want to say congratulations to you. You have worked your butt off and and you deserve every bit of success with your finances. And I know you're going to continue to crush those student loans. And it's been an absolute privilege to have you on the show today. And and not only to share with me, but I also know that there's other people out there that are just getting started with this. And and you're you sharing that journey here today has, has given them motivation. It's given them the encouragement to say, Hey, let's, let's give this a shot and and we can do this. If, if, if she can do it, we can do this too. So I appreciate you taking time out of your day to hang out with us here today. Thanks so much, Brad. Absolutely. Hey, if you love planners, this is for you, but do you know why planners frustrate me? Because they only really get it half right. Now, sure. They're really good and fancy about helping you manage your time, which is really important, obviously. That's what a planner's for. But where they get it wrong is money, the second most valuable resource in our lives. Most planners don't include any financial planning, things like you know, keeping track of paydays, bills, due dates, spending, yearly expenses, budgets, cash flow planning, debt elimination plans, and goal planning, right? None of that stuff. That's a real pain. And then what? Then you got to create your own and some silly binder, right? And who has time for all of that stuff? So instead, what happens? Nothing, right? A lot of people tend to ignore their finances even more and things only get worse. Well, that all ends today because I am so excited to announce and release my brand new, totally awesome debt freedom planner. This thing's awesome, by the way. Now, before you say, Brad, I've already got a planner. This is not an ordinary day planner. This is the Debt Freedom Planner, which is a companion tool that works with your day planner, and it's built to help you manage your money, pay off more debt, and melt away financial stress. And and I believe this is the tool that a lot of people who want to take control of their finances have been waiting for. So head on over to therealdebtfreedad.com, click on the Debt Freedom Planner in the menu to get access to your planner today. Hey, hey, what's inside? See, I thought this was a party! Let's do it!
All right, all right. That's all means it's time for the celebrations of the show. And today we're kicking it off with Amber Langdon. Amber says, I've been able to keep $1,000 in my emergency fund consistently for the last few months. I paid off over $700 to collections, paid off my counseling debt, as well as a line of credit through the bank. I'm also getting ready to pay off another $1,000 towards another loan so we can get that paid off as well. Those are some monster wins, Amber. Congratulations to you. Marianne Guinness took a trip to Missouri to visit with family, able to pay all of it with cash, have emergency fund holding steady, enjoying the trip as there was no worry about how to pay for things. Yeah, those are the best trips, huh? Paid Heck cash. Yeah. Love that. Great job. Amelia Welch, Logan got an extra $100 in his paycheck this week, so we put a total of $300 into envelopes. I have tracked all of our spending this month as well. Huge wins. Congratulations. Robin Middleton paid off a credit card, added $400 to savings account, also started tracking daily spending. Those are some awesome wins. Congratulations to you, Robin. Sarah Boysen, been able to put my last several paychecks from my side job towards my revolving ranch loan that is due at the end of the year. Also, unfortunately, I just tested positive for COVID. However, I am not stressed about money due to my savings account. And I uh, hope you're feeling better and nothing too serious, Sarah. But again, there is some silver lining there and that you've got an emergency fund put into place. That is exactly what it is there for. So that is a fantastic win. Good for you and uh, quick healing. Michelle Chaney, I haven't went into the negative in the checking account since starting Roots. That is amazing. Huge win. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us here today. We love your feedback and it also helps us grow our YouTube show. So please give us a like or leave us some honest feedback on this video. And if you want the latest from the show, obviously be sure to hit that notification bell and subscribe to our channel. And for the latest resources, or if you want more information on how to kick debt and financial stress, please be sure to check out the links in this video or head over to the real debtfreedad.com. We'll see you guys on an upcoming show. Take care.